Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Today on the show, I am talking to an, a romance author. Uh, she writes m- romance novels and uh, actually self-publishes them. Started out with a publishing company, got the rights to her book back, her books, I should say. She's written 13 books over a period of just a few years and also does audiobooks and publishes them all herself, indie publishing on Amazon and Amazon Kindle and Audible and records the audiobooks herself. We talk about how she promotes them, how she publishes them, how she uses Amazon Advertising Network to get her readership and also landing pages and getting emails of authors, or not authors, but people to read. You get what I'm saying. She finds readers, not authors. Come on, Tom. Anyway, it was a great conversation. It was really nice talking with her. She's also a musician who travels with a production of a it's it's a production and a performance it's theatrical but it's musical it's called uh, almost elton john we talk about that um, talk about a lot of things she does a lot you know what let me have her explain it here is the interview starting right now <laughs> Kelly Fletcher. I am a best-selling romance author and singer. My pen name is K.G. Fletcher. Okay. And that's me. Yeah. And so best-selling, tell me about that. Uh, Well, right now I have a book that's um, on sale and it's actually number one in three categories in the romance genre. Oh. Um, There's a voracious readership in romance. It's a billion dollar business. And I've been doing it since 2016. Um, I'm a full-time indie artist and uh, I've written 13 books. And when you have a large backlist, um, you you tend to hit some of these bestseller lists when you run a sale or um, yeah, when you're promoting it. I run a lot of Amazon ads, Facebook ads, Uh BookBub ads. Um, I have a a large Instagram following. I just got started in TikTok. I'm trying to learn. Oh, you're doing that, that huh? Uh, I didn't want to, but I know I don't want to either. All the, <laughs> the authors are going, and I'm like, well, I'll I'll check it out. Really, um, the authors so, are yeah. going that direction. They are book huh. talk. Look it up. Hashtag book talk. Yeah. What does yeah, that entail? Like, wh- what are they doing? Because all I picture is like, I. First of all, I would feel weird. I can't dance, and I'm. Being an older male, it just seems like I'm doing something creepy. Uh, you know, I mean, that's my no. first, it's, you know, but what's, what's, what, yeah, what's the book talk? So book talk, um, it's basically, you know, a lot of authors are giving you a behind the scenes look like at your author space. What's a day in a life like? What I've been doing is um, using little excerpts from my books and I'll put them over a montage of um you know, inspiration photos of my characters, or I might even narrate a scene. Um, sometimes I'll just stare at the screen and smile and there'll be like an overdub of a voice about, you know, the the book that I'm thinking about. I mean, it's just really random, silly stuff. I've never danced, okay. you know, on book talk, never So it's that. my own misconception of what I think that it it's is. supposed to be. And, okay, all right. And it was my con- misconception too. So I'm very new to it, but I'm kind of emulating some other authors. But um, there's a couple of authors that I follow that have gone viral with one book talk, you know, hashtag book talk. And they've like sold so many books because of that one video that went viral, you know, like a seven second video that went viral. It's nuts. I, I can't wrap my head around it. What is the length? I forget what the length of the video you can do on there is. I know they're different. Well, you can, for- well seven seconds seems it is seven to seconds. be okay. the sweet spot, but you can do up to three minutes now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, the, yeah. that's the part I have trouble with is the pairing it down to a certain time length, especially like the mm-hmm. Instagram stories and stuff. I'm like, it doesn't make any sense for, yeah. you know, especially if I try to take something from something else to promote it. Like here's a yeah. caption from it. That part's hard for me. Yeah. But I don't know. But but yeah, yeah. you're right. It's I, I guess I've never really I, I'm making an assumption on a platform where I haven't looked and seen like what are other people doing. I just 
I know, yeah. I know from what they show me in the random commercials that I don't think they need to promote their product that, that I see. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's popular enough. Yeah. Really, you need to do a commercial. It's like when Google does a commercial on TV. It's like, oh yeah, gee, I should try out that search engine sometime. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a time, it's a time suck for sure. Because okay. Because it's very entertaining. Like I, I get sucked into it, but I'm there to promote books. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So if any of y'all are on TikTok, look up KG Fletcher author. Okay. And, so, <laughs> and friend me, I need friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here was, so now you said you started in 2016, which I'm going, wow, that's not that long ago. And then also you said, and you have 13 books and I'm like, yeah, Okay, that's doing the math there. That's more than that's also yeah. more than I would expect. So, how did you get started in 2016 and why? Oh, Lord. Well, I've always been a writer. Mm -hmm. I've just never published a book until 2016. Okay. Um What were you doing before that? I like was, were you posting on a blog or what were you doing? I was a songwriter in Nashville. Okay. So, I I wrote songs and lyrics and um collaborated uh, with my husband, um, we toured the Southeast with a band for a long time. Um, it wasn't till we had, I have three sons and, um, things got expensive with sports and all the things that go along with, with boys, my frat house. And, um, so I was working, <laughs> it's a frat house. Okay. Um, I was working in corporate America, which is so unlike me for about six years. And, I was so bored oh, yeah. being an artist my entire life. I mean, I've been a singer, a musician, songwriter my whole life. So being in corporate America was um, kind of out of the ordinary for me. And I'm, I'm the type A personality that, you know, sits down, gets my work done and straightens the desk and I'm ready to go home. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's 10 AM on a normal weekday. I'm like done by 10 AM. So, I found that I had a lot of lag time and I just kind of started writing these little short stories and um, it turned into a book. And I had a friend, another musician friend whose sister had published a romance novel. And I, those are the kinds of books I like to read. Okay. Um, I grew up on Nora Roberts and, you know, all those Sandy Brown, all those big authors I grew up on and, um, I talked to my friend and I'm like, how did she get published? Like, what's, how do you do that? And sh she put me in touch with her sister and I kind of started learning the business first before I ever queried a publishing house or an agent or anything like that. Tell me, so, how, learning, uh, the learning the business, how, how did you... Like what it, well, I, I want to I mean, know, I want to know what that would be. Cause I mean, it is one thing to write a book and then like, okay, I did a yeah. book, but learning the business. And that's kind of what I was yeah. leading up to. Like what, what did you learn about the business when you were getting into it? Yeah, Writing a book is the easy part, right? It's the business, it's the business side that is just, it can be overwhelming, but, um, you know, I started taking a lot of classes and joining Facebook groups and growing my social media and, and befriending other authors. And I ask a lot of questions like, how did you do that? What uh -huh. did you do here? You know, oh, I love your book cover. Who's your artist? You know, just you kind of dive headfirst into the author pool and just start, you know, learning as much as you can. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I did some research on some smaller publishing houses. Like I didn't, I knew that, you know, I'm a total unknown, never been published. Right. I don't have an agent. I'm like, how could I get in to a publishing house with, you know, a blank slate here. So mm -hmm. I, I, I had written my book. Um, I had a couple of friends, you know, read it. And of course they're going to say, it's the best book I've ever read, you know, and really blow up your head. Yeah. But uh, I uh, I researched some smaller um, publishing houses that cater to romance, and it was um, it was the end of 2015. No, yeah, it was 2015. It was um, nearing the holidays, 
And I said, I'm, I'm going to send it to five publishing places that okay. I researched and I'd read some of their authors and I'm like, this is right up my alley. Well, New Year's came around and that New Year's week, I'm like, I'm going to hit send to, to the five that I narrowed down. I'm going to just send my manuscript, my cover letter. And that's you know. like the worst time of the year that you could send it to somebody too, like vacation well, and all that. <laughs> okay. I did. I did the first, it was the first week of January and I'm like, just do it. Just get it over. It. Okay. I, I was tired of thinking about it. I was yeah. tired of thinking about it. Let's get it off my plate and just move on. Well, within 30 days I had a publishing contract. Really? So, so many people are so upset with you right now with that statement. Like you just sent five emails and boom, somebody. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I signed (laughs) a three book deal with Inkspell Publishing, which is a very small um, publishing house. And it was, it was what my three years, each book was a three year contract Okay. and I had three books. So while I was with Inkspell, I got to know all the authors that were part of it and just really learned like how it's done. Yeah. And it set me up like after my third book was published with them, I was like, I, I, I want to make some money now. Cause I, when you're with a publisher, I mean, so no, you don't make a lot of money. Okay. Your publisher's mm-hmm. making most of the money. Cause they're the ones that are hiring the editors the proofreaders, the cover artists, they're footing the bill, basically. Mm -hmm. You're only getting a percentage of the book sales once it goes live. Yeah. So, you know, I'd get my little tiny royalty checks every month. and Well, and how well was it received? Like when you did this, I mean, even though there's the cut, like what what did they do to actually put it out there? And like, how, how was it being received? And you can be it, as as pleasant or as unpleasant about it as you want. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it was very well received okay. on my end because I'm I'm a doer. I'm a go getter. I'm like <laughs> I'm spending my own money on my own ads to get my book out there, making my publisher money. Mm-hmm. And I knew right away. I'm like, you know, I want to be the one making the money. So. I decided that I was going to, I was going to indie publish a book. And, um, and I, when I was ready to do that, I was ready. Like I, I had a newsletter list that I had started. I knew more about ads and marketing. And so my first indie published book, can I show the book? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. I don't know if you can see it. See the hot cover. Yes. That's a romance book right there. I, w- so I did this, notice right away that that, uh-huh. was, that was kind of a, a, a running theme I saw on the books that you have. <laughs> yeah. Not, not all my books are Manchester, okay? okay? But this is my bestseller. My very first indie published book, yeah. Georgia Clay, is my bestseller. And this is an homage to my days as a Nashville songwriter. So um, people were fascinated with that, with that story. Um, and it was very near and dear to my heart. So. How's it an homage and to I, it? I'm, I'm curious how, how that cover I, goes to writing songs in Nashville. <laughs> well, that's my husband right there. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to tell everybody. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm the cover model for all her books. Right, so. we found an old, anyway, an old Polaroid that we had around and used that as the cover. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So um, when I released my first indie book, um, I knew that it was going to be a series. So there's three books in that series. It's called, it's a it's called Southern promises and it's Georgia clay, Georgia on my mind and Georgia pine. And it's still my best selling series book. One in that series sells over everything else I have. Okay. Um, but then I got the rights back to my first three standalone books from my publisher. Yeah. And I relaunched those under my name, KG Fletcher. Oh. And we did the covers, did a whole reboot, like a whole re-edit, added some bonus scenes, and um, republished the first three books. So I started getting a backlist going, you know, under yeah. my own name. And um, I have another series that just completed this past December 
Um, I did a time travel romance last year. Really? Just for fun. Just for fun. Because I love the movie Somewhere in Time. You remember that movie, Jane Seymour and Christopher Reeves? Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Okay. It's it's an old cult classic. Yeah. Like from the early 80s. And it's one of my favorite movies. It's why I love romance so much. And I wrote a time travel romance um, called Love's Reverie. And um, <laughs> all my books have. I just um, love the way that you say the titles. You say it as if, you know, like, this is the title. <laughs> like like you're not doing it over the top but it's like i hear a little i hear a little uh change in your voice when you say the title i love that <laughs> yeah well that was just a fluke it was just something i'd wanted to always i've always been fascinated with time travel okay books and movies and i'm like which there is a romanticism like about time travel i mean even like yeah. straight up sci-fi movies oh, there's some yeah. sort of element where it's like you know it's somehow yeah. it's connecting with someone else that you can't connect yes. with you know so it was it was definitely fun and because i'm a musician and a singer um a lot of my heroines are singers a okay. lot of my heroes are rock stars or musicians you know um I'm I'm dubbed the singing author, so um, that's just kind of my my shtick. <laughs> <laughs> I, and and here's another little tidbit. We'll yeah. go back to Manchester. Okay. When this book came out, um, I actually wrote a song that's in the book, and we recorded it here in Atlanta, oh. and it was a bonus oh. for my readers. They could download it. But it's an original song, and um, I do that. I, I do that a lot. Um, so you're in Atlanta now. You're not in Nashville anymore. I'm not in Nashville anymore. Okay. Um, I'm based in Atlanta now. So why'd you yeah. go out to Atlanta? Well, I'm from Atlanta. Oh, you are. I was okay. only in, yeah. I was only in Nashville for a short time. Um, okay. Were before you... we went on the road. Okay. Singing and playing. Did you ever do the? Uh, did you that one? Uh, I don't, I don't want to call it the touristy strip of bars where they have performances, but it kind of is, you know, you know, the one where it's like people are playing and they walk around with the big jar for tips. And then you go to the next one and oh, they're yeah. walking around with the big jar for tips. <laughs> oh yeah. Been yeah. there, done that. We've, okay. we've played all the honky tonks and yeah. the big, we played the wild horse saloon. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we played a lot of big country line dancing places where oh, wow. it's just these giant roots. Like that was, yeah, that's what we did for a while okay. until until the frat house took over. Right. So. <laughs> so how do you make the time to write all these books that you've been writing and the ones that you were, you know, you you've been doing? Like how how do you, what's the process for like getting these out in, in the amount of time that you are? Well, I'm very prolific. Um, I can I can write a book in about eight to 10 weeks. Wow. I can't even you read know, one in I, eight to I, 10 weeks. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> but you can watch eight to 10 hours of TV. Darn right. You? Yeah. That's easier. I don't, it doesn't take any effort on my part. <laughs> See, I'm the opposite. I, I, yeah. Reading is just, I, I get immersed and I treat it. This is my business. This is my livelihood. I'm an indie yeah. artist. Makes um, sense. Every single day. I, in the morning is, is more of the business side. It's like the marketing and emailing and, um, social media. And then in the afternoon I shut everything off and I write for four to five hours. Really? Um, yeah. Huh. Yeah. But I, I'm also, I'm a, I'm a backup singer in a national tour. And so I travel a lot ah, okay. and I, I'm in a lot of hotel rooms. We have a lot of downtime during sound checks. Oh, so I sense. always have my laptop with me and um, I'm always working on something in, yes. in that time. Setting up and waiting to go on and as, as a musician myself, not to this extent that you are yeah. in touring and stuff, but man, that is, there is just nothing to do. Right. <laughs> you can oh, only yeah. make yeah. like even small talk with the people you're hanging out with. It's like, all right, I'm done mm -hmm. trying to think of things to say. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go yeah. stand over there now. It's like being at a party where it's like, oh, uh, I'll be right back. And then you just move. Right. Yeah. And these well, are and people like, you like. <laughs> I know. I just I just got home on Sunday. From We were out for like half a month on okay. tour with this little surge in, in 
business, it's great because the world is back for live music. Yeah. So we, we played a show in Houston and there were 6,000 people in the outdoor amphitheater, Miller Amphitheater in Houston, downtown. Yeah. It was amazing. People are so happy and it's just pure joy to, to get to witness that on stage. Yeah. yeah, it's so cool. But when we fly out to the West Coast, you know, you're on an airplane for four and a half hours. Right. I have my laptop. True. So I make good use of my time yeah. when I'm working on a project. So, yeah. And the yeah. the act that you're touring with, is this the almost Elton John one that I read about? Yep. Yep. What, what's that yeah. all about? What's this? <laughs> Okay, I see so pictures of it, and it also seems like it's got kind of a theater production to it as well. It is. It's totally theatrical. Okay. Um, Craig Craig A. Meyer, who plays Elton, he's um, he he he's a Broadway veteran. Okay. Um, he was on Broadway for years, and then he toured with Barry Manilow and Frankie Valli. Neat. And n- now he does his own show. Um, I've been with him for a decade. Hmm. You know, it's the funnest job I've ever had. It's seasonal. Um, he does a lot of cruise ships in the in the summertime. He's a guest artist and flies. They fly him in to all these fancy places and fly him out. Wow. Um, but the band, we're all based out of Atlanta. And we fly everywhere as a group. And we play with a lot of city symphonies. So it's our rock and roll band with a 50-piece orchestra. And it's all music of Elton John. Wow, 50-piece so, orchestra. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. Um, but it's it's really fun. And um, we sell out. Right now we're selling out everywhere we go because yeah. people are just so ready to be back uh-huh. and experiencing live music. But it's all the songs you know. It's all the classic Elton right. tunes. Well, I would assume a, so. It's, it's not going to be like, here's some that. random things that he never released. <laughs> no. <laughs> that wouldn't make sense. No, everybody, and everybody's <laughs> singing. Everyone's dancing in the aisles it's just a really fun show okay so yeah and i always have the tour dates on my website in the calendar section yeah so i was checking i that. always get i always get comps and i tell my readers you know in my newsletter you know i'm gonna be in houston this week if you're around i have some comps and i've met a lot of readers that way oh they'll i'll they'll be a guest of mine and then i'll i'll meet them afterward and it's so fun that's cool. How far <laughs> yeah. how far around do you uh tour? Like like we do you tour just all over the United States. The US. Okay. I didn't know if you went yeah. like to other countries or anything. We've we've been to other countries, but we haven't in a while because okay. of everything that's happened. So Right, right. Yeah. I, I yeah. guess that makes sense. Yeah, I guess I should have yeah. answered my own question there. But <laughs> um Yeah. And you said that you contacted your readers um through your email list. Now that's another thing I'd like to know about, like as a as an author i know right now you actually have a free sign up you're using uh prolific works i think is the name of the format where people can enter an email yeah. is that how you've generally been getting your your readers is through um like a free excerpt of the book or something like that well in in the back matter of my books yeah i have i i tell everybody you know do you want some more romance? How about a free bite-sized story if you sign up for my newsletter? Okay. And people are like, oh, click, you know, or they'll take it from the paperback and type it into their search engine. But yeah, that's that seems that's something I learned in some of the conferences and classes I've gone to. Yeah. Is to have a like um, it's called a reader magnet. Mm-hmm. And um, if you do if you do newsletter swaps with other authors, you can offer your reader magnet in a swap with someone like they'll send out their newsletter with your little blurb of your reader magnet. And Mm -hmm. it's a free download. So it's nobody's spending any money and it's a little taste to see if it's, you know, an author you might want to purchase a book from. Right. Um, I also do a lot of giveaways. Well, not a lot, but, um, I'm exclusive with Amazon and Kindle Unlimited mm-hmm. and Kindle mm-hmm. Unlimited. Do you know what that is? It's like a, yeah. it's like Netflix for books. Right. Yeah. If you read a lot service. of books, you can go like, okay, I'm just going to pay this yes. much a month instead of buying the books every time exactly. I want to read one. Yeah. And that's 
where I make all my money because you're paying. And that's through an e-reader too. That's page read. Yeah, those are the mm-hmm. e-books too, which is interesting yeah. because the e-books for the most part, and I guess I should ask you about this, um, they're deemed as something that are at a lower price. Now, do you have like a different mm-hmm. price range between your e-books and your print books or do you charge the yeah. same? Oh gosh, no. Okay. Print books are usually about twelve ninety nine. Right. Um, and and my audio books are usually like around fourteen or fifteen dollars. Okay. But my ebooks are generally between two ninety nine and four ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing like the yeah. usual market value that I see. Okay. Yeah. 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 And um, you know, I want to get people in with the first book in each series. So usually the first book in the series will be the you know two ninety nine. But then some of the other books might be three ninety nine. Yeah. You know, it, it depends. And then because I'm with Kindle Unlimited, you with every quarter, it's like a it's like every three months, every ninety days, um, it starts over. You can um, they let you do like a what did, what did I just do? It's like a a freebie. Like mm-hmm. I can offer my book for free for five days. Right. And Kindle Unlimited markets it. Like I have a free book going on right now. I didn't know that. Here comes my, here comes my, my title. <laughs> Run to the sea. <laughs> okay. This book is free right now. And it's a Kindle. Unlo- it's a, it's an Amazon deal. Uh-huh. It's, it's free. You can download this book for free right now. The deal ends on Saturday, but I am running this deal and Amazon is pushing it because it's free. And there's bestseller lists for for free books that are going on. And I bought, have you heard of um, E! News Reader? It's an email blast that goes out to avid readers that sign up for it. Oh, no, I didn't. It's like, it's kind of like BookBub. Okay. But anyway, I, it was like a $65 e-blast. You have to submit for it. And then it was approved. Well, that happened yesterday oh. and the e-blast went out at 830 in the morning. Yeah. And by yeah. noon, I had over 2000 downloads nice. of this book. Oh, wow. Okay. Which it, it which helps because I offered book two in the series, Stars Fall from the Sky, for 99 cents. So right now you can get two of my books for 99 cents. Mm-hmm. However... <laughs> Um, all five books in that series are, I put them in a box set Mm -hmm. and it's releasing as a box set this coming Tuesday. And right now it's on pre-order. Oh, I saw you had a video where you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's only $3.99 for five, all five books. Now, how are you doing this as a box set? Like, is it even a physical, like comes in a package box set or how is it being done? You can do, you can do it like that, but I've found that just doing it as a, an ebook bundle is is the best way to do it. So yeah, and that's be- that's what I want to know is like how are you doing that? I know that they recently came up in uh, in uh, Amazon KDP that you can create series, which is awesome because then there's actually a link where you can go and it's like here's all the books in this series. That part, it's like, how no, have you guys not yeah. done that already? Um, well, like, they do. Pretty... They have linked it though. Okay. Like all these years, they there is a way to link it, but now they've just streamlined it. Yeah. Now so, it's um, just right there, and you go, "Is this book part of this yeah. series?" And you go, "Yep." And it goes, "Okay." And then there's your landing yeah. page for those books. But how are you? How are you actually bundling them together? Like, what's your process? So, um, I bundle it together as an ebook. It's a new. It's considered a oh. brand new book. Okay. It's considered a brand new I wasn't book. thinking of it and, like that. That's smart. Okay. And I've titled it the series title, which is this is the re- this is from the Raining Hearts series. Okay. So, I have a brand new ISBN number. Yep. It's a brand new book called Raining Hearts. And it's books it's a new release, five. so it gets to the top it's because a of brand its new, new release. Oh, yep. Oh, that's smart. And Kindle Unlimited readers see, oh, it's a new book. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. And it's a bundled series and they just ravenously read the whole thing. Yeah. So which we didn't go over brilliant. the fact that the benefit of Kindle Unlimited, if I'm not mistaken, I was just thinking of this. It's kind of like Spotify in the sense that you get paid by the pages read. 
right? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's an, a very overlooked thing. It's just like, you know, if yeah. they read two pages, even though they bought the book, it's like, okay, you get the two pages, but if they go and if they multiple read it and there's the shared lending library. So if they lend it to a friend, mm -hmm. the friend doesn't have to read it, but yeah. you still get paid. Sorry. Yeah. I just, that you, was, that was all you one know a lot about books. <laughs> I will. I publish my web comics as books. Um, they're just okay. harder to publish because, um, it's a personal diary. So it's, it's kind of hard to go like, Hey, read this thing about me doing mundane things throughout my day. You know, it's, I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> well, probably not that hard, which is also why I want to get to the next part too in a second. Um, which is how you're advertising it. We're talking about the email list, but, um, but yeah, so I, I tried to do that. I've dabbled with it. And, um, also I have a background as a web marketing developer. So like I was, oh, cool. I was paid much like you, I'd go to a corporate job and they go, we need you to learn about this. And I'd go, okay. And I'd go to those like media or, um, uh, advertising outlets and go, well, I'm just going to pretend like I'm doing this for myself. How, how would I use it? And then I got paid to actually learn how to market myself. So that's that awesome. Was, yeah, no, it was fun. Anyway, sorry, that was a weird uh, side <laughs> side information about me. Um, but uh, how are you? How are you doing the advertising? I know you said you were doing the Amazon advertising, and that's yeah. easy and hard. It's easy to make an ad. It's hard to make it something that doesn't cost a lot and actually gets clicks. <laughs> so here is my biggest tip. Okay. For any author that's looking to dabble in ads. You gotta take Brian Cohen's five day Amazon ad challenge. It's oh, free. Okay. He does it every quarter and it was a game changer for me. Total game changer. I have over 200 Amazon ads running right now. Nice. Oh, and, wow, impressive. And I, and I pay less than $100 a month. Okay. It's just, it's, there's, there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. That's, um, very inexpensive, but it works. Brian Cohen, his Amazon ad challenge. It's a free five day, five day course. And it was a game changer for me as an author. That's when I started making money after I implemented what I learned in his class, you know, also, um, 20 books to 50 K are, have you ever heard of Craig Martell's Facebook group, 20 books to 50 K probably I, I, I subscribe to a bunch of that stuff, but I never actually took any of the courses. I would just do the, I'd go yeah. through the library of stuff and try to mm -hmm. figure it out myself. So yeah, he has a great, you know, course that, that I signed up for. Okay. It's a, it's a little pricey, but oh my gosh, you know, you have, you have to learn, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, if you're serious about making a living and and being a full-time author, you have to learn the business side of it. Yeah. Which it's it's not it's not the glamorous side of of writing, being a writer, but it's an essential side. Mm -hmm. And um I'm always learning. I'm always taking classes. Um if an author recommends a class, I'll check it out. Um I've stopped buying all the classes now. I'm like, okay, I've <laughs> You know, unless it really speaks to me. Um, but like I'm going to the Atlanta Writers Self-Publishing Conference. Um, oh, okay. So we Saturday. It's the very first one that they're offering in Atlanta. So, um, but Craig Martell is going to be there as a speaker. Oh. So oh. I'm probably going to fangirl and be like, you changed my <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you'd yeah. have to get in line. I'm sure there are several people before you right? that are going to say the same thing. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> But no, I mean, these people, they're just regular people like us that figured out something that worked and they're sharing it with the world. And, yeah, you know, yeah. when it clicks for you um, and you see things happen in real time and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, um, but I'm, you know, I have a long way to go as far as making bank, but it's a, it's a slow process, but you know, I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah. So. And in the yeah. Amazon ad platform, I will say it's, it's interesting in the fact that it's, like I said, it's simple and the objective is just to keep moving people around Amazon. You know, it's mm -hmm. the promotion is in Amazon for Amazon on Amazon. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not sending people to another site and then hoping that they, you know, it's just, 
Yeah. It just looks like part of when you're scrolling through Amazon. It's kind of like the way that yep. Etsy has their advertising right now where they have the promoted listings, which people don't like because their stuff could be promoted in front of somebody else. But also it's a competition. It's like, well, step up the game yeah. then, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but oh, it's, it's all, it's like a bid war. Yeah. You know, it's all about your bids, but you can have successful ads with low bids. And, and, and that's what people don't realize. But in a competitive market, how are you doing it? You yourself even said at the beginning that this is a competitive market. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I guess you is. just need as much as you need, right? I guess. Oh. Yeah. I'm answering it's, my it's, own questions it's here. A lot, it's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot about like keywords and, and budget, daily budget. And there's, there's so many components to it. Yeah. But Brian Cohen, he spells it out like, mm. like a, an elementary school teacher. You know, I don't want to say he dumbs it down, but he kind of does. And it, it made yeah. sense to me. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, dumbing it down is it's, it's unfortunate that that's the, that's the phrase where I know what you mean, but it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah. of course it's, it's like when, uh, when I did start a job at a different corporate, uh, corporation, but it was in the medical field and they use too many acronyms for everything. And it's like, how am I supposed to know what, what this is? Like everything was like, oh, we right. need that thing on the ICRM. And I'm like, what, what's an ICRM? And it's like, it's your main thing that you're working on. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. I'm trying to figure out those in um, social media, like HMU. My niece was using that. And oh. I'm like, please tell me what HMU is. And she's like, hit me up. Right. I'm like, duh. Those, those ones you can at least... Um, you can at least do a Google search for and it will show up. My my favorite one though is, uh, and I, I remember the day that I, I realized this, uh, one of the people, uh, I, uh, one of the people I worked with did a similar thing and they're like, what's IDK? And I was like, oh, I got an idea. And, and I go, well, why don't you Google it? And they typed in IDK and the first top of the search, it said, I don't know. And I was like, oh, Google doesn't know what it is either. <laughs> That's a good one. Come on, that was gold. <laughs> I was so impressed with myself when I did that. It was like, it was, I'm, uh -huh. I, all I needed was a physical trombone going, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep, anyway, exactly. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> These are the tangents that I love. Um, <laughs> and then, so when you, uh, when you told me that you had people joining and you were sending people on your email list, um, mm -hmm. a, 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 kind of a, I forget the way you put it, you, you put a bite size. Reader magnet. Yeah. Well, Reader uh, magnet. you were sent, yeah. you said for a bite sized thing, are you taking yeah. it directly from a book or are you creating like an original just for the no. email? Okay. It's an original little short story. It is. And it's, and it just, it gives you a taste of my writing style. Um, you know, and it's a, it's a cute little cover that draws your eye. Um, it's been, as opposed you know, to the I'm, other ones that don't draw your eye, your covers no, draw the eye. <laughs> there's a lot of book covers out there that are like, wow, no. Okay. Fast. But, I mean, you do judge a book by its cover. Yeah. You know, um, unfortunately, but, um, you know, it's colorful and, and fun and it's like, Hey, a little fun bite-sized story. Why not? Yeah. Um, so I, I do that. That's, it's the first, it's the first thing you see on my website. You know, I'm like, hey, here's a free book. I mean, everybody is drawn to the word free. Right. Um, and I use it in um, through prolific works. Um, that's how it's downloaded and integrated with my newsletter service, MailChimp. Yeah. Oh, so um, it does connect with MailChimp. I was going to ask if that yeah, was just the, like the lead page thing or. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's, no, a lead it's page there's all the integration. Yeah. OK. Which is great. Um, I also use Story Origin, What's which is a new it's a new platform for authors. And that's how I distribute my audiobook codes. When you release an audiobook, um, I'm through Audible, and they usually give me 50 free audio codes, promo mm -hmm. codes to get the word out. And um, there's a section in Story Origin where you can say, you know, I have audio codes for this new romance and people, I mean, I still get people um, requesting audio codes. Hmm. And what's great yeah. is through story origin, it's kind of like um, they're, they're watching over these people that are requesting the code because for them to get one of your codes, they have to agree to leave a review on audible 
uh, or Amazon uh, or Goodreads. And Story Origin is the one that reminds them like every 30 days if they haven't left a review yet. I don't ever have to be in contact with them. But I'm just, you know, I'm like, hey, I got these free codes, you know. Right. If if you're, you know, <laughs> I'd rather you spend, you know, $15 on my audiobook, but it's been really successful because I've garnered a lot of reviews using those codes, which the more reviews you have, the more presence you have on the platform. And yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> when did you yeah. start doing uh, audiobooks? When did you make your first one? Uh, it was during the pandemic. Oh, okay. So, so fairly recently. Okay. I, I have a BFA in theater. So I've done a lot of, um, you know, voiceover work, um, commercial stuff for the radio. Um, when the pandemic hit, I lost 58 gigs oh. with the ring show. Yep. I was, I was out of work. And so I had to pivot. And one of my bandmates um, has a home studio. And I was like, I'm going to record one of my books. I'm just going to, you know, I've always wanted to, I, I want to do this. And he kind of helped me get the right equipment. And I set up a sound studio in my closet and um, I took some classes and I learned how to do it. And when, when my first audiobook was approved through audible, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> like, Oh my gosh. And it just kind of snowballed. I I've done, four books in my second series. I have one more to, to do to make it complete. But um, yeah, I started audiobooks because of the pandemic. So, so tell me about the process and in, in what you learned on how to do it. Like what's your, what's your process going in? Cause you can't, it's, it's tough to just sit there and like read straight through, you know, it's so what, oh, what yeah. Do you, yeah. So what is your process for recording it? <laughs> well, um, I mean, as an actor with, uh, you know, with an, an acting background, um, I mean, I know my characters very well. Um, you know, I go through takes. I can usually do one to two chapters oh. um, in a recording session. I thought you were going to say pages. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, no, no. One to two chapters. I, two is my limit. And then my, I'm vocally dead. Um it's really hard, even with a, a sound booth that I have now. I live in suburban Atlanta. I live on a cul-de-sac. And everybody but me has a freaking yard service or a dog. So <laughs> my, microphone, <laughs> my microphone picks up all of it. And it doesn't matter what time of day. Um, we're, over, uh, we're near Peachtree to Cab Airport. So there's little jets flying over every now and then. So it's a lot of stop and start, um, but I've learned how to, you know, crop it and edit it mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, the hardest part with audiobooks is not the narration for me. It's it's the production part. It takes me hours. It yeah. takes me hours. Yeah. What are you so, recording it in? Uh, what what software do you use? Audacity. Oh, you're using Audacity, Audacity. really? It's I a am. it's I a am. nice little program. It's very visually yes. it's dated as all get out, but it's yes, it it's a super powerful yes. tool. I still I mean yeah. I use it for different aspects of this. Like I I yeah. compress and normalize the audio from these podcasts using it. Yeah, and it's free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. And then there's some other little thing that I use that does compress the, my bandmate set me up. Right. So I I am not technical but if I can do it, anybody can do yeah. it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so what is the, what is the ratio of people who get the, am I saying this right? The ratio of people who get the audiobook as opposed to the, like say the ebook, like is, is it, is it fairly similar? Like, I'm just curious how many people do the audio books. Um, it's definitely on the uptick. With okay. audio, yeah. um, all the articles I read about um, in indie publishing, like audio is like the next big thing that's on the horizon. Like, right. 
you know, they always say that something else is on the horizon, but um, eBooks are where it's at for me. That's where I make the most money. Yeah. Um, but having audio books, there's definitely um, people want them. Um, uh, my readers, not necessarily, Okay. <laughs> you know, so, but they, I mean, they've done well. Well, I guess, um, yeah. And thinking of that, I'm, and this is me, not really me only having an assumption of romance novels. I don't think I've ever actually read one, um, but uh, it would seem weird. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to die. I'm I, gonna I may one. have and not known it, um, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think I would feel weird listening to one, but that's also me being a guy who hasn't read romance novels. So I just, even thinking about it, I'm like, I feel like I'm blushing a little thinking about it going, that would be weird to, for me to listen to a romance novel. Like, should I be listening to this right now? <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. It's big business. And, yeah. and the trend right now is duo narration. So there's a guy reading that makes sense. the hero and a woman reading the female. And it's like, in the romance world, usually each chapter is from the point of view of either the hero or the heroine. Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes, it's like dual point of view. Okay. And so with audiobooks, it's easy for a male narrator to do a chapter and then the female to do the next one. Even though there is crossover with their voices, like he's going to, if he's talking to the girl, he's yeah. going to have to use a voice for her. Um, but that's like, a lot of romance authors love that duo narration because there's a lot of sexy male voices. That's kind of what I was getting world. at. I just didn't know how to word it. <laughs> yeah. They, the, they love that. And see, I'm, I'm a one woman show. So I've had readers say, you, you know, could do the voices. I loved your, I, I lo <laughs> yeah. I, and they're like, I loved your story, but I wish that the male was a, was a real male voice. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's so expensive. I mean, one production of an audiobook is around three grand. Yeah. If and you're hiring narrators and production, you know, and that's why I kind of put it all into my lap and I'm like, I'm going to do this and it's not going to cost me anything. Right. Except time. Which makes sense. So, and and also yeah. it's pretty nifty to have an audio book on audible. I mean, that's, that's an impressive yeah. feat right there. You know, even just telling people that you have one, it's like, well, that's cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask one more thing. It's um, basically, you said you had some books in the works, like what kind of things do you have coming up? And it could be anything uh, really that you want to mention that maybe we didn't talk about here, but like what sort of things do you have coming up in the future that people should know about? Well, um, I'm working on a new series. It's it's like a family saga. Oh. Um, it's four brothers and a sister. And it's based off of a little mountain town in uh, North Carolina. And it's a Christmas tree farm and winery, <laughs> which is, okay. you know, very romantic. But it's four brothers and the sister. And each, each sibling is going to have their own book. And it's going to be a longer series for me. Oh, wow. Um, and the, the lone sister in the series is kind of the, the Lee Drummond, the, the pioneer woman from the Food Network. She's kind of like okay, I got the you. one that cooks for all the farm hands and all that stuff. So I'm going to have a reader magnet that's a cookbook with oh. a bunch of the recipes that are mentioned in the story that she makes for the crew and stuff like that. So I've got lots of ideas for that. That's so, neat. um, yeah, yeah. So I'm working on that. I finished book one and I'm working on book two, but I'm not going to release any of the books till I have the first three books completed. Cause I want to do a rapid release, like release the first book two months later, the second book, two months later, the third book, two months later. Yeah. I'm going to try something like that this time. So. Wow. How close to yeah, having right. those done? Like, I know it's nice to have them prepared ahead of time or like maybe be one yeah. ahead. Are you, are you doing that? Or are you really doing it like as you're doing them? Well, I'll probably have the first three books completed by the end of the summer. Wow. So I'm looking, nice. I'm hopefully looking to have a, a fall release of book one. Okay. Then, yeah. But I'm also, I'm going to record my, 
time travel romance. It's a duet. Um, I'm going to do audiobooks for that. That'll release in the fall. And then I have um, a Christmas novella that goes with my second series that released in December. And the first four books in this series are all on, on Audible, but the Christmas novella is not yet. And okay. I got to record that and I want to have that ready to go for Christmas. So I hate so I much that we're already on. thinking of Christmas, but that's what you have to do. You know, it's like, yeah. it's barely even spring right now. And you're talking about Christmas. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. What are you target? I know. <laughs> <laughs> already putting up Christmas stuff. No. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, but. But I release three book, at least three books a year anyway. So. That's impressive. I, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And if people wanted to see some of those books, where would you suggest that they go find them? Well, you can go to my website, kgfletcherauthor.com. There you go. I like that you got <laughs> author in the name too. That's nice. Well, I want to thank yeah. you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad that you reached out and uh, asked yes. to be on the show. Thank you so much. 